Hello there, welcome back to my workshop. Today we're taking another look at the Atari 2800 joystick. I've worked out all the issues, so we're going to look at the bill of materials, the 3D files, where you can get the parts from, so that you can make your own. So let's crack on with building the joystick. So here we are, after quite some time, I've got this working to a point when I'm very happy and the self-centering is working really well. I did a few things, I actually made the knob a little bit shorter so there wasn't so much weight and then we've got the springs that I've put on. I also shortened the length of the joystick a little bit because I'm using these new molded leads and uh, they come with a set length so we'll look at that in a bit. But everything is working really well. Uh, on the side we have a circle and like a diamond and the circle is paddle mode and the diamond is joystick mode. So you can see which mode it's in. So here is the case. This is printed in the Everyone Sparkle Black and printed on my P1P. You literally cannot see any print lines. I just think it looks fantastic. So as before, it's printed standing up with the supports, but there's a minimum amount of supports. I'm using four millimeter threaded inserts for this part. The PCB is held in with self-tapping screws. The case just fits together and there's a bit of a click. And then we've got two M4 screws on the bottom that holds the top and bottom together. We then have the joystick buttons and I've done this one in red. That's, that's the printed case. This is the new printed circuit board. What's different from this one to the last are the holes for the springs. So these are the springs that I've used and they were from AliExpress. I brought 50 of them, so I have plenty. They have a little post, like a little spike on the end. So my idea was that they would fit through the hole on the circuit board and that will hold it in place. You can't see it on this version of the PCB, but I've got a printout of the one that's currently on PCB Way for you to download. And you'll see that I've put the colors of the wires on there. So I brought these leads from AliExpress and again, link in the description and they come with pre-tinned wires. So, um, and I've checked and they're all the same. So these are quite cheap. They're only like a pound or so each. So that's the PCB, link in the description to the files on the PCB way. You will have to order five, but I will have some for sale on my store because I've got some spares. And I'm using some Panasonic switches, which I'm buying from RS Components. As long as they are physically the same size, it doesn't matter what type you use, but they do come with different force. Like these ones are about 0.45 Newton. I think that's correct. Then we have this little tiny switch and I ordered those from Amazon. You could probably get them from somewhere else, but I just found them on Amazon. Link in the description. Everything will be linked in the description and I'm going to use my Omni Fixo. I'm going to start with the two switches first and we want to put the switches on the side that has the silk screen. I'm going to hold them in place with the Omni Fixo, solder one leg on the top, flip it over and then we can solder the legs on the other side. Then we'll do the other four switches and again mark them up so that they are on the side with the silk screen. We'll tack one leg in, flip that over and then reflow all of the legs top and bottom to make sure they're nice and strong. Now we're going to solder the joystick lead on. Like I said, your PCB will have the colors on there, but it goes blue, white, brown, green, red, orange, gray, and black. The yellow one doesn't actually connect anything. So I've just put it on to stop it flapping about. So that's the joystick wired up to the circuit board. You'll note that there's two pins left and they are to connect to the, the joystick part. So next we have the parts for the inside of the joystick. So this is a TE uh, one meg part and it originally comes with a 40 mil shaft and I've reduced it. You have to cut it down by 10 millimeters, but don't get it wrong. Like cut it down by nine millimeters and then tweak it so that the, the knob fits on correctly because if you do it too short the knob will rub on the case we don't want knobs rubbing on cases so be careful when you reduce the size of that we then have our four printed parts 
The top now has threaded inserts. They are M3 threaded inserts. The bit, this part now has like the crosses with the pegs for the springs to sit on. And then I just made some tweaks to the sizes so that everything fits correctly. So we take this part and uh, take the nut off the potentiometer. We don't want the nut on there. And that sits in and it should sit in flush. And that little notch bit sits on there. Then we take this part that goes down. You'll see that there's another notch. So that sits on top of there. Then the top part and you align everything with the three screws. And then on the bottom, the bottom part sits on and that should just sit over the bottom of the potentiometer. So now we start to align everything up and we've got these little button head screws. So they just push in just a little bit fiddly but if we just get those pushed in we can use that to line up with our threaded inserts so that is the, the joystick innards then on the bottom we would put this six millimeter ball bearing again i bought that from amazon but obviously we'll put that in when we put it in the case so now on here we need to solder on the wires so we're going to wire up the pot and i'm using a black and a red wire so the red goes to the center and the black goes to the side we're just we're just going to trim that down So black at the top. And red at the bottom. That's potentiometer wired up to the PCB as well. Okay, we can take our case and we want to be putting the case on something so that the joystick can poke through and you'll see that we've got the three holes so if we just place the PCB it fits over that center shaft and everything lines up we then secure the PCB with M3 screws. Now it gets a little bit fiddly because we need to put the springs on. So the springs will sit on those little nipples on the joystick base. So there we have our four springs and they will stay on there now. So now it's just a matter of lining this up and getting the springs to go inside the holes on the PCB. And obviously push it down so that it go, they sit inside of the micro switches as well. It's very fiddly. Uh, we put our ball bearing on. We put our switches in. And then we've got to put the top on. Oh, and don't forget we put our strain relief in. That pushes down so that the flat part is aligned with the flat part of the case. Oops, see, it's really fiddly. Okay. So I've got everything. Now we can get our case on. Check that the joystick moves okay. 
Then we have our M4 screws that hold everything together. So like I said, it's really fiddly, um, but it's worth it. But then the last part is the knob and the knob has been giving me some problems because of how it fits on the shaft and depending on the filament that you're using and the printer and how it's calibrated I got this working so that it fits on precisely but then I printed it in another material and it was too tight I printed it on another material and it was too loose so you're really going to have to spend a bit of time to get the size of this perfect depending on how your printer is calibrated so that that is I think a little bit too easy to come off whereas this one is is too hard and I just can't get it off without using some kind of tool and I'm worried that that's going to damage things so that's it that's our joystick uh, it's finished so let's talk about how you can make one so I'm going to do two things number one the files will be available on my shop to buy for a few pound. So if you want to help, the, help me with the channel, you can buy them and support me with a small donation. I will also put the 3D files on printables if you just want to download them. Then there will be the list of the materials with all the links to the places that I bought them from. But I do have a lot of the parts spare. So there will be some kits on my store along with the PCB. So you'll be able to buy the PCB on all of the parts. The PCBs are shared with PCBWay. So if you wanted to get the PCBs and self-source anything, you can do that. Again, you'll have to buy five of the PCBs, but then that does help me. I get a small kickback from PCBWay uh, if you do use my files. And there will be three of these that are for sale on my shop. So I've got two of these in the everyone sparkle black and so they're more like a carbon grey. There'll be this one which will be in um, bamboo sparkle black. So that's very sparkly and black. And the last one I did this one which is in galaxy purple with uh, bronze and um, the bronze looks more like gold. I think that one looks nice and loads of people commented how much they liked that one. This doesn't mean that you could do different themes. You could change the colors however you want. The knob is split up into two into three parts. And you could actually do it with a simple layer change. You don't need to have a multi-material printer to do that. So I, I thought I'd show you some pictures. I've got Goku and Frieza editions and um, you could do chop and change the colors however you want. There we go. Thank you for watching. Have a look in the description for all the details for all of the files, where the PCB comes from, where the 3D files are, and all the parts that you need to make one. If you do make one, please share them with me on my socials, on Twitter or Mastodon or whatever else is going on at the moment. I would love to see them. And there will be a link to my shop where you can buy some of the ones that I've made. There's only a small number, as well as some of the parts that I've got left over from building them. Those parts, if you're in the UK, it should save you ordering 50 springs from AliExpress. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.